Hello and welcome to New Filmmakers Los Angeles in partnership with Movie Maker Magazine. My name is Danny Delilo and we're here at the South Park Center and I'm delighted to be joined with Theodore and Adrian with their movie After Laughter. Let's take a look at the clip. Oppression makes wise men go mad. Your fathers were wise men. And if they did not go mad, they became restive. But with brave men, there is always a remedy for oppression. Hey, Jamal, did I tell you I'm not a virgin anymore? What? You want to be a man now, huh? I tried for you, boy. I tried to teach you about family, about responsibility. I feel free, like I can be who I am, not who I think I'm supposed to be, you know? Theodore, Adrian, thank you so much for your film. You are like a dream team and I <laughs> loved your film so, so much. Um, but for those that haven't seen it, tell us a brief synopsis. Uh, After Laughter is a story about a family that as they travel through time, in there, <laughs> after laughter is a story about a family as they grow together uh, through several decades of time. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a, a story about love, a story about coming together, and a story about finding and picking up the pieces that uh, they find and lose uh, through age and through growth of the changing times. I mean, honestly, it was really spectacular. Like, I love the story. I actually didn't want it to end because I was really <laughs> engrossed with the characters and, and the journey it took us through. Um, I'm also in admiration of the fact you took us through several ages as well, and I know that's quite a, quite an undertask to make. Yeah. Um, where did the inspiration come for you both in deciding to create this story? Well, for me, I actually, <laughs> in my creative process, I actually had a dream. It all stemmed from a dream. And uh, the song we had discussed was uh, After Laughter, was a song from Wendy Renee. It's yeah. like a song in the, in the 1950s, and I was dreaming about this kid, uh, initially I was the kid, but it wasn't me, uh, and he was experiencing these life changes uh, happening to him and trying to figure out what it was. And I woke up and I, just, I heard the song and I was like, oh my God, I have to write this. And I just wrote basically like a one pager. Uh, and then I came up with it. I ended up shooting, shooting a promo for it, but mm -hmm. just like a kid at a TV seeing these events happen. And then I came to him, and because he literally, he will take my process and expand it to another level. Because uh, I'll have these ideas in jot jot, and he'll like make, like help me like define those uh, those ideas. Um, ama amazing. And so, I mean, listen, I could feel the energy. You can feel the energy of the room. There's a really great collaboration, <laughs> or they share together. So you got, you got the yin and the yang of each other kind of thing. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I tend to lean towards the creative. Mm -hmm. So uh, I'm writing, directing, working with actors, working with everyone on the creative team, and Adrian takes the production side. Mm -hmm. So he takes, mm -hmm. he's handling producers, he's talking to money people, he's handling all of the uh, outside influences that mm -hmm. might influence the creative process. Mm -hmm. uh, and we think it's really important that we have that separation of powers in yeah. the group. Yeah, yeah, uh, because Money, as we all know, has a it kind of has a corrupting influence on creative mm -hmm. ideas. Mm -hmm. And when it comes to money versus creativity, the money's always going to win. Yeah. So mm -hmm. we want to always have somebody that has a, a controlling stake in the final project mm -hmm. that isn't corrupted yet. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so that's why we have like this the separation. Great separation, and it, it works really well for us. And also too, like, because you know, first and foremost, before I you know was writing directing, I'm an actor. So like, mm -hmm. uh, coming on and, and 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 being able to, it's great because. I talked to him about the direction of ideas. Like, I'm a fan of long takes, and he loves that I love long takes. And like, he implements helping that, helping get those moments in the composition. And then, so for me, when I'm acting, because you know I acted in this as well, I'm able to step away from like yeah. the behind and focus because I know that he's got it. He's gonna help me and help get the best performances. Mm -hmm. I mean, 
even on you know b book some TV shows and some yeah. films, I literally had rehearsed with him, and he's like directed me and directed me before I end up booking. So yeah. we already have that kind of like you know that nuance uh, collaboration thing going on. Yeah, Adrian, just talk about your acting because you were brilliant, by oh, the way. Like thank just you. just so you <laughs> know, because I'm like I d when I saw you, and you had this bright, open, smiley face. I was like, oh my goodness, I wasn't. <laughs> oh what? That wasn't expected. That you gave something different. Good actor. Um, <laughs> thank you. But thank no, you. honestly, I I think you're. You, oh, I mean, I know it must be difficult. I want to talk a little bit about the the kind of journey with the years and the significant dates that you incorporate into that um, in a second, but your cast was amazing. Did yeah. you always know, Adrian, with your wonderful dreams that you were gonna be in it? And how did you bring the rest of your cast <laughs> together? Because it was so good. Actually, I'm so sorry. No, of course, no. Uh, actually, it was him who said, what do you think about playing Clevis? We, he was he was planning on being in it. This was always yeah, yeah, a vehicle always. was gonna have Adrian in it. But in the beginning, he was planning on playing the uh, Main young character, yeah, Jamal. Oh, Jamal. Jamal, yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. and yeah. And as our as our process developed, it really just became clear to me that Clevis was a more uh, developed and deeper character, mm -hmm. and it would mm -hmm. give him more of a acting range to work with. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And he agreed, and sure enough, it, yeah. I think it worked really well. Yeah, I I talked to one of our head producers, Valerie, um, who's amazing, by the way. Uh, she was, she, I came up with like, Teddy, you know, I brought up the idea of like me playing Cleva. She took a minute and she said, I love that idea. <laughs> I said, all right, I guess we're going to do this then. <laughs> and it was kind of just went, went from there. Yeah. Uh -huh. There was significant dates um, from the 60s to the late 80s um, for the course period of time. And it was, it was fascinating to kind of see these very big, important times in history and then centering those characters around yeah. How was that process in working that out for you? Because it was really good. Um, the time periods were always one of our main focuses. Uh, the, the goal, like our main idea here was that inside of your house, there's conflict that's going mm -hmm. on all the time. Um, and those conflicts that are going on in your house are more important to you than any conflict that's going on outside of your house mm -hmm. when they're happening. Mm -hmm. So we, we wanted to place it, it's a black family, so we wanted to place it in the backdrop of the civil rights movement. Um, and we used iconic moments and people from those eras to really kind of build our timeline. Mm -hmm. So for our first, uh, our first year is the year that the civil rights, 1964 mm -hmm. is the year the civil rights, uh, the civil rights uh, bill. bill was signed by Lyndon Baines Johnson. Mm -hmm. uh, and then 1968 is the year Martin Luther King was assassinated. Mm -hmm. It was the, the night of the Cleavis biggest night of riots. Exactly, and we we wanted to put yeah. it up on Clevis's birthday. Yeah. yeah. To to have like you know with these crazy disasters that we as we think now like oh I wonder what people were doing. Yeah. yeah. Was, uh, someone's birthday. It was. Birthday it was party. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> right. Right. <laughs> like, yeah. You just deal with it. Yeah. yeah. Right. And then uh, the next the next scene uh, was f our, we were originally going to have it be Muhammad Ali fighting Joe Lewis when he lost. Yeah. Um, but the getting ac getting <laughs> getting access to that footage was impossible. Impossible. Uh, even like one second of it was yeah. way, way out of our budget. Yeah, so, way out of our so budget. So we, we went with a cartoon that was from kind of the same time, and the cartoon kind of has uh, homoerotic overtones. Mm -hmm. If you watch that whole cartoon, mm -hmm. yeah. here, it's very much yeah. in, like, in that vein. So we kind of used that cartoon. It came out in that same year, and it was... Uh, it was. It, it kind of served a purpose, but it didn't really serve yeah. a purpose like we needed it to. Yeah. Um, but that was our, our thinking there, and we were able to build out that scene because it was about the two boys coming together mm -hmm. and figuring out their conflict with each other. So yeah. it, a boxing match felt really good mm -hmm. to use there, but we weren't able to use it. So mm -hmm. in any case, uh, the fourth scene Soul Train was a. We wanted Soul mm -hmm. Train. That was our uh, our our throwback. And then, um, By the way, if you look closely on the Soul Train, you'll see Teddy actually in there on the screen, on yeah. that little TV screen, Teddy. doing the dance, his little cameo there in there. You I go. was like, you're in it, buddy. You're, you're being in this. John Lee Brids going on. <laughs> oh, this. perfect. There you go. <laughs> they got me out there. <laughs> um, but yeah, we used Soul Train. It was the, the vibe was happy and fun and funky, and the contrast that it created with the violence in that scene mm -hmm. Mm. was excellent for, for what, we, what, what we wanted. Um, and then for the fifth scene, it was the the uh, LGBTQ mar march, the the march for gay rights. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That happened mm -hmm. in 1983. Was it? Uh, yeah. 87. 88, I believe. 88. Yeah. I mean, it was amazing because obviously, you know, 2022 where we are today, and you know, taking it through all of those time periods and how 
much tougher and rougher it was uh, for, for many families for many different reasons. Now, what I loved is you had so many layers to your film. Like, I felt like there were so many people that could watch your film and relate or be educated or learn. Um, and one thing I loved that you said last night is you want to create this like warmth, you yep. know, yeah. which I, I felt like I was sitting at the table having those sandwiches. I mean, it was yeah. really like very much <laughs> like that, you know. Um, in terms of how you want it to feel and focusing around this family, even during the, the good times and the bad times, was that always kind of how you wanted it to be perceived by your audience? And talking about the dynamic of, you know, uh, having someone that sticks up for you, you mm -hmm. know, for support of who you are and who you love, mm -hmm. uh, share a little bit about those dynamics. Yeah, I know uh, initially from, from, from Jump Street, from Get Go, we had talked about it being a warm film mm -hmm. and creating that warmthness to it, I think, it's so much, it's it's very prevalent and not overdone, but you know, constantly we're seeing like the full uh, antithesis of this and we're getting the clash and clash, mm -hmm. but what about normal normalcy and, and, and human behavior and family, right? Because like, you know, families are up and down, you get mad at each other, you fight, you're angry, but you know, there's always a sense of love. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, through the given, given circumstances, it was important that the characters uh, inhibited this kind of um, uh, real uh, life um, uh, family values, yeah. in a sense. And I think for us, we had definitely had talked about it, even from the color, from the sound, from the scenes. We, we yeah. really wanted to create that. I think the, the goal was to kind of create a feeling of acceptance. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, because in the black community, in the gay community, uh, it's a very sought after thing, like just being accepted yeah. by the larger society. So. Um, those themes that like that acceptance brings that feeling of warmth. Yeah, and I feel like that's mm -hmm. kind of what we're when we talk about warmth. It's yeah, like that embrace that comes from being with your family. Yeah, yeah. and I think so. Each scene we kind of tried to color grade it so that it had the emotionality that we were going for, mm -hmm. but it still never lost that warm, homey vibe. So that yeah. you always feel like you're sitting in, on the couch and just like watching a family fight and get over it or whatever. And it's, yeah. yeah, you never quite feel like the stakes. The stakes feel like they could get high, but they don't really go too crazy. Yeah, and, and it, I feel like that's the average everyday life of most people. Like your stakes can get high, but they usually don't. And <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> and 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 I think adding to that as well, I think. It was really important to tell because you know so much in the African American uh, community and tied in with the LGBTQ plus community, uh, you you hear stories of like you know people in the families like really really dishing it out and angry about it. But you know, I think it's a very prevalent thing. I mean, and and, and both of our families, we we know we we have that in our family, and then there's love. But w I think the most thing that we want to and pass down even to mm -hmm. our to our kids. You know, I have a, a four year old, and he has a, 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 a one oh, one year old. Mm. Uh, is passing down to our our kids is like love, you know, yeah. and acceptance. I think, uh, I think that's how we really truly move forward, right? Yeah. Is, is is feeling that and, and showing that and passing it down. And I think we just really wanted to show that because initially, also too, in the last scene when with, with in the pregnancy, like we Teddy and I are those kids in the stomach that mm -hmm. of the family. Like, these are stories of our family, and mm -hmm. we wanted to show like passing down the acceptance and passing down the torch. Oh, another funny. another thing to add on to that was uh, that we wanted to make sure that the stories didn't end negatively. Yeah. yeah. Like we wanted to show that you could have these conflicts and have this difficult upbringing and then you can grow into a successful person and you can have a life that you enjoy and love and have people that love you and that's it. Yeah, uh, man. Like we yeah. were, when we were talking to people right after the festival last night, a bunch of people came up to me and they were like, I'm so glad that the character came home and he didn't have any disease. Yeah, and he wasn't yeah. A it, and right. Wasn't it was just, anything. exactly. Like, so right. many people we came up. jokes and about <laughs> it even. And it was like, and that was so great. Was like, <coughs> yeah. That was, what we, that was our goal. That was our goal. Yeah. We, yeah. We, we wanted to make it where it's right, right there, you know, you deal, but like, it's not yeah. the story. That was a nice, actually, and refreshing surprise because obviously, obviously, yes, it did finish in 1987. I was yeah. <laughs> immediately worried about him thinking he's in San Francisco. Oh my goodness, yeah. during mm -hmm. the height of the seasons of, mm -hmm. of, of, of that pandemic. Mm -hmm. um, and so I just wanted to say though, I think anybody that is watching it, whether is um, relatable to the context of that or whether is a father that needs to learn about their child's sexuality. There was mm -hmm. so much context in there. Yeah. And I think it's, I think it's a life-saving film for, for, for many people because you, you know, it's about that. getting Thank over you. and getting through and overcoming and you really captured that. Is that kind of something that you, you wanted to show? I know you've got kids yourself, so I'm yeah. sure you're thinking of them. 
Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. I, I, and it's so funny. We we talked to a lot of the, the directors and filmmakers and got really like cool and cozy with them and talking. And um, the, some of the things they said were like dead on from what we were thinking. And and I, I <coughs> from the Tale of Daughters directors, they said, and we saw the nuances in there of like yeah. him talking about of Malik talking about when he was first coming out with his sexuality. He said, you know, I, I had sex with. Yeah, uh, genie, and you're like, and they're like, no, you didn't. <laughs> you're lying about that, of course. And 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 that was initially what, like, trying yeah. to hide and 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 advert the story, and 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 I I think it was important for us to hit those nuances, Definitely. but be subtle. Uh, and it really felt great hearing the audience hitting, hitting, hearing the yeah. nuance, feeling the nuance. Yeah. Like they catch yeah. the little jokes, the jokes, catch and the, yeah. the undertone, and you can yeah. feel them like recognize it. it's like yeah. such a cool feeling the laughs and when yeah. I got hit with the bottle yeah. people were like yeah I was like yeah me too I was like that I'm a yeah. too, just um, but it was I mean I think it also showed elements of just having advocacy I remember I told my, my, my best friend I was gay and I was like uh. and I was feeling that moment with the same with the cousin and everything else and then my aunt was one that kind of with a certain member of my family to place and I think you know but yeah. I think having advocates and people that you can trust you know for anything you're going through in mm-hmm. your life you know, if it's just one person, it can alter and change your, exactly. your life, right? I yeah. mean, he maybe never got to San Francisco had he had maybe not had this conversation, yeah. Well, exactly. you know? Exactly. So, it, I just love your exactly. film, my <laughs> goodness, you. honestly. <laughs> Thank um, you. No, you got such a great positive reaction. I could talk about your film all day. I love the way, you, you know, you journeyed around for the age you did. It's such a class act. Mm-hmm. I just want to not forget your cast as well as you, Adrian. Like, mm-hmm. your your young cast, you mm-hmm. know, they were all brilliant. Amazing. Yeah. Yeah. They were Amazing. We couldn't ask for a better cast uh, that fit and also, you know, resembled each other in a yeah. way. Yeah. We somehow casted them ourselves. We did our. And, we did casting the ourselves. Promo yeah. that, the promo that he originally shot for this actually used the same actor but for a different part. Yeah, oh. he was older yeah, now. He was so. old enough to play the Malik part yeah. instead of the Jamal part. Yeah. It was, yeah. It, was just, it was great. It was yeah. like, it's like felt like serendipity. Yeah. yeah. Agent, you're scary, I'm just saying. <laughs> just, uh, you, you needed a bit of a whip around the head in that character. Um, <laughs> Thank you. But, uh, yeah, Clevis was an uh, interesting character to play. Because uh, whether I, you know, the ideology behind it, I was like, you know, I didn't really, you know, gr- agree, but you t- yeah. in his head, and he loves his son. He just yeah. of course. didn't know how, how to, to communicate. Exactly, yeah. which we face a lot with, you know, our families and as we grow in the changing of times. Is yeah. How do we relate to them? And you captured that so well in that moment of someone that didn't know how to support, didn't know how to love, only got taught this masculine mm-hmm. testosterone yeah. way of expressing yep. themselves. Yep. Yeah. You know, and it almost was what he'd been taught himself too and yeah. was passing that through and mm-hmm. how dangerous that can be sometimes. Mm-hmm. So you got it. What is next? What's next for this dream team? What's going on? <laughs> <laughs> well, we're working on a series right now. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's a comedy, dark comedy. A dark comedy. Uh, the, it's a fantastic dark comedy. We call it, we're saying it's more like a, a fantasy Atlanta but but younger. Yeah, Ooh. like uh, another thing that we said, it's like it's like uh, girls, but for like young men, mm-hmm. uh, like entourage, but for broke people of yeah, color. Like entourage. Because it's l- like love it. it never gets the high end, but it's gritty but beautiful, and uh, yeah, uh, it's called aimlessly waiting. We're working on it right now. Actually, we Amazing. have work to do on it today. Yeah, we're, we're <laughs> after this. Well, I don't want to keep you waiting. Okay, <laughs> we got more creativity to come. Um, just to finish up, and I know we sort of talked about this last night. Just you know, filmmakers out there all your kind of important subjects that are important to you and your storytelling, like what piece of advice do you have out there for our filmmaking audience? Uh, my piece of advice is uh, speak less and do more. Uh, talk, talk less about your craft and work on it more. Yeah, uh, never give up. Resiliency is everything in this business. You're gonna have turbulent times, mm-hmm. uh, but if you love what you do, keep going. And remember, I know a lot of people, especially young people, I, I was like this as a young artist, is sometimes it's afraid, you're afraid to expose and share your project because it's not quite perfect, it's not quite there, It's maybe it's here, but honestly, I said this last night too, uh, remember it's like a gift, but a gift that is wrapped and you're giving, what do you do with gifts? You give them and let people read it and, and take what they need from it, mm-hmm. but just put it out there, you know? Your kids are so lucky having you as dads. My goodness. <laughs> um, well, thank you so much. Thank you, Theodore. Thank you, Adrian. Thank you for After Laughter. I can't wait for your next projects. And thank you for being part of New Filmmakers LA. Thank you. Yeah. Hey, thank you for having thank us. You, yeah. Thank you. Thank you, guys.